Are you ready to be successful and to be financially free? If so, let's welcome our speaker. He needs no further introduction. Mr. Karigma Conference himself, Brother Bo Sanchez. Thank you, Belden. Can I invite you to stand up for a while? Wow, wow. So excited to be here. Tell somebody beside you, I'm happy you're here. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. We're going to be talking about the theology of money. Everybody say that with me again. The theology of money and, and you know, what, what I'm going to share with you can be very controversial to some people and I'm just going to warn you, if it's the first time you hear, you're, you're hearing me speak on this topic, you might be jarred by the novelty, by, by, you know, you'll be surprised by how I'm going to approach things, but, and, and here's my suspicion, I'm, I'm probably speaking to people that have heard me speak about this topic before. If you've heard me speak a little bit about this topic before, could you just raise your hand? I want to see a raise of hands so I know I have a home court advantage here. Thank you so much. Thank you. How many of you, this is the first time you're hearing me live? Raise your hand. Woo! That's wonderful. Let's give each other a big hand. Wonderful. So are you ready? Let's say a prayer together. Thank you, Father. In the name of the Father, Son, of the Holy Spirit, you are a good God, and thank you so much that this day is another day, and uh, the, uh, you're going to speak to us, and you're going to bless us, and you're going to transform us. You're going to make our lives so blessed, overflowing with blessings, that we will be able to share that blessing to many people. Thank you, Father, for your love for us this day. You have a destiny for us to fulfill, and we are we are just so excited to be able to make this destiny be, become true in our lives. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Everybody say, God will bless me today. God will bless me today. I want you to turn to somebody beside you. Just tell that person, God will bless you today. Amen. Before you sit down, I want you to hold someone's hand again, grasp it hard, like you're going to break some bones. And I want you to tell this person in Tagalog, okay, in Tagalog, Hindi masay ma yumaman. Amen. Let's all be seated, everybody. Today I'm going to talk about in the brief time that I have with you, I'm going to share with you the four distorted religious beliefs. Are you ready? Say, I'm ready. We've got some religious beliefs that are distorted. I want to correct them today. Let us begin. Everybody say, I'm ready. Number one, let's dive in. God wants me to be poor. This is a belief, especially in a Catholic nation like ours, Many people think that God wants them to be poor. Many Catholics, many Filipino Catholics believe that if you want to be close to God, you should be poor. That you are more pleasing to God as a poor person than as a rich person. And, and I, I want to correct this. You know, the, the scripture that people use is this. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 21, they, they read this passage and they say, you see, God wants you to be poor. Um, Jesus answered to, to this young man. He, he said, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor, and then you will have treasure in heaven, then come and follow me. So he was speaking to this young man, and, and he said, well, if you, if you really want to be perfect, if you really, if, if this is the call that you, you want to respond to, then Jesus said, sell all you've got. And give all to the poor. A lot of people read this passage and said, oh, tingnan mo. This is it. This is what it means to please God to become poor. Not understanding that this is a personal call to an individual, not a general call 
to a general people. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Very, very important. Do not try to impose a specific call, let's say, on your life and say, this is also your call, when it's very possible that this is just a personal call on your life. And my, my, the easiest thing I, I like sharing to people is that, you know, in the Catholic Church, there is such a thing as a vow of poverty. And it's a beautiful thing. There are certain people called by God to take that vow. But if you notice, if you notice, people who take that vow, the vow of poverty, also take another vow. What is that vow? Please shout it out. Celibacy. Those two things go together. You cannot take the vow of poverty without taking the vow of celibacy. Both are going together. So God calls special people to take the vow of poverty. And if that is your call, please do. I believe this is the biggest and most important question of them all. The biggest question is, how can I love more? Everybody say that with me, please. That's the most important question of life. Do you understand me? No, you don't. Say this with me. The most important question in life is this. How can I love more? The most important question in life is not, will I become rich? Will I become poor? Does God want me to be rich? Does God want me to be poor? That's not the most important question. The most important question is, how can I love more? At the end of the day, that is the greatest commandment. God said, love me with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. This is it. This is the standard. This is, this is the criteria of life. This is the meaning of life. To love. To love in the best way possible. Now, how will you answer that question? If, you're, if you can love more by being poor, then yes, go for it. Take the vow of poverty. Be a Mother Teresa on the streets. Are you listening to me? But if the answer, your answer is, your personal answer is, I will love more by being an entrepreneur, by investing, by growing my resources so that I can help more people, so that I can give jobs to people, then what's the answer? That's your answer. Am I speaking to somebody in the room? Yes. Number two, I need to move quickly here. Distorted religious belief number two. I am unworthy to be blessed. A lot of people say that, you know, I am unworthy to be blessed. Many good people, religious people, prayerful people think that, you know, they, they want to say that prayer. And you know what? That was my prayer a long time ago. I, I, used, I used to pray, Lord, I do not deserve to be blessed. Lord, I am, Lord, I am a worm, Lord, I am, I am a worm, and, and no, I'm not a worm, Lord. It gets worse, you know. Lord, I, I, I am the bacteria in the worm. Yes, Lord. Yeah. No, no, Lord, I'm not the bacteria in the worm. I am the virus in the bacteria in the worm. Lord, I do not deserve your love. You know, th there are, and you know what? There is a grain of truth in that, in the sense that, you know, God has blessed us and loved us. We, we, don't, we, we did not work for that love. We did not earn that love. It was given to you completely. Do I hear a loud amen? amen. You, 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 don't, you didn't work for that love. God gave it to you. And so in one sense, it's true. But in another sense, there's something wrong if that's all that you pray. Lord, I do not deserve your love. I do not deserve your love. And I used to pray that prayer a lot. You know what, just want to share this with you. Um, recently, about last two weeks ago, I, I went through my journals. I, I was doing some, you know, every day as a young, young, young man, I would, uh, I'm still young, but, but younger, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, I would write my journals. And, and about two weeks ago, I revisited them. And I, I have to say this in Tagalog, awang-awa ako sa sarili ko. 
when I was reading my journals, there was a lot of self-loathing. There was a lot of self-hatred. There, there, there was a lot of, I despised myself. I looked down on myself. I was religious. I was praying. But I did not like myself. And, and so there was a lot of, every journal entry. You know how I started? You want to know? Forgive me. <laughs> I was so focused on my sins. I was so focused on my failures. I'm going to preach about this tomorrow a little bit. And, but, but basically, here was my point. God came to me, just, just, just made me realize, Bo, I'm not sin-obsessed. I'm Bo-obsessed. I don't even, when I look at you, I don't even look at your sins. I look at how wonderful you are and how beautiful you are. You know, guess what? 20 years ago, I was sinking deeper and deeper into my addictions because I didn't like myself. And it was only when, when, when I began to realize how much I need to like myself that I began to be free from my addictions. Am I speaking to somebody here? Does this resonate with you? The more you focus on your own sin, on your own failures and your own faults, and, and you, oh gosh, I'm so bad, I'm so bad, the more bad you become. Because that's your focus. You attract what you focus on. But, but when I started focusing on, on how wonderful God made me and how wonderful God's love is, you know, I began to be free. Now, here's my point. Here's my point. I want you to believe that right now God made you deserving of His love. God made you deserving of His blessings. Do I hear a loud amen? I love sharing this story. I was in, I went to, I went to Thailand and I gave a seminar there. And at the end of the seminar, my flight was to Manila. And it, it, it ended a bit late. And so I, I went to the, I went to the airport. Uh, I'm sorry, I went to the mall because I wanted to buy a gift for my sons. But when I arrived in the mall, the stores were closing. So I, I went back to the hotel walked back to the hotel, a little bit disappointed, and I told myself, you know, I, I need to buy something for my two boys when I go home. And so the next morning was my flight. And when I rushed to the airport, we were late because of traffic. And so when I arrived in the airport, I was supposed to buy a gift for my two boys in the stores in the airport. I could not do it because my, my, my flight was, was on. And so I was running in the airport, and I was looking at all the toy stores around, and I said, bye, I couldn't buy a toy. I rode the plane, sat down, resigned myself, and I said, well, no toys for the, for the little boys. And then the stewardess, marching in the aisle, was my salvation. Duty free, duty free, and I said, yes! And then I, I, I got, I said, what, what's there? Johnny Walker, no, my, my, my kids don't like that. Uh, <laughs> And then I saw something, a metal toy plane. Yes? You're familiar with that? And I said, two please, you know? And so I bought that and I went home and my sons were there. My little boy especially loved that toy, loves those planes. And so I, I had it on my back. And then I said, Francis, I have a surprise for you. And Francis was jumping up and down. You know, he was, he was still very small. And I said, what is that, Daddy? What is that? I gave it to him. And my gosh, his eyes lit up. And he began to play that, that play Ooh, the whole day. The whole day, just playing with it. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to think about it and imagine if this was how he responded to me. Francis. I've got a surprise for you. And what if Francis did this? No, Daddy. I do not deserve your love. <laughs> what would I do? What would you do if you were the father? Halika, anak, dun tayo, magpatingin tayo. It's a psychologist. You know, we would be very worried. But, but that's my point. I, do you believe that God wants to bless you? Do you really, really believe that? Parang hindi. I, I, want you to, I want you to hold someone on the shoulder. Can you do that? Just grab someone on the shoulder, tap him in the shoulder, and just say, Kapatid, 
Mahal ka ni Lord. Gusto ka niya i-bless. You know, it's, it's very important to change this whole distorted thinking, I am unworthy to be blessed. No one is worthy to be blessed, but God has already made us worthy. Do I hear amen? amen. And, and He wants to love you and He wants to bless you. Here's, here's distorted belief number three. Are you ready? Say, I'm ready. Oh, <clears throat> here it is. Rich people won't go to heaven. Have you heard that? P people, people, you know, just kind of like talk about that and say, yeah, yeah, you know, rich people won't go to heaven. Where does that come from? It comes from a scripture verse that's misinterpreted. Matthew 19, verse 24. It says, let's read together. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. And, you know, people say that, oh, tingnan mo, hindi makakapasok sa langit yung mga mayayaman. But then people don't understand this was, you know, the, the, everybody say eye of a needle. The, the whole idea of eye of a, this was an idiom, say idiom. That during the time of Jesus, 2,000 years ago in that particular locality, you know, they, they understood what the eye of a needle was. How many of you have ever seen a camel? Raise your hand. All right, even in TV. How many have ever seen an eye of a needle? Raise your hand. So can a camel go through an eye of a needle? No. But you see, this was a Jewish idiom 2,000 years ago. When Jesus said, eye of a needle, He did not literally mean a needle. He, everyone knew when Jesus said this, they, they knew He was referring to the doorway of the house of the camel. Ask me why. Everybody called it the eye of the needle. The doorway of the house of the camel was very small and was very narrow. And so a camel, for it to go into his own house, he had to unload all his, all the, all the bags and the boxes on top of him. The camel has to stoop down to be able to go into his own house. Are you listening to me? And so when Jesus said, when Jesus said, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. He was not saying, he was not saying rich people can't go to heaven. No, Jesus was saying a rich person can enter the kingdom of heaven on two conditions. Number one, he unloads all his wealth. He detaches himself from his wealth. Number two, he stoops down before God and he says, all my wealth belongs to you. Use me, Lord. And that's how you enter the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> Tell somebody beside you, detach. There is a problem. You see, th there's nothing wrong if you have if, if you possess possessions, the problem is when the possessions possess you. When you, when you are not detached, you, sh you should have the ability to say, money is not the most important thing. There are more important things in life. One more time, tell somebody beside you, detach. And then number two, everybody say, stoop down. When God blesses you tremendously, when God gives you, prospers the work of your hands, Learn to stoop down before God. Amen. Here we go. Number four. Don't focus on money. Trust God for your needs. A distorted religious belief. Yes, we need to trust God. Yes, we need to trust God. But we cannot depend on Him and then expect Him to do what He wants us to do. I believe this with all my heart that right now God has planted seeds in your life and He wants you to be the one to plant them and He wants you to be the one to prosper them. I've, I've seen this so many times. People of faith, people of prayer, people who are religious, people who are spiritual, they go to God and they say, Lord, pahingi ng pera. Lord, 
You know, they want God to actually give them money. And I'm telling you, you know what God's response is? I gave you the power to produce wealth. I'm, I'm going to share with you this scripture passage. Be before the scripture passage, just want to say this to you. Don't expect God to do what He expects you to do. Tell somebody beside you. Don't expect God to do what He expects you to do. God, if God wants you to work, then work. If God wants you to develop your gifts, then develop your gifts. If God wants you, am, am, I, am I speaking to somebody here? Yes. Scripture verse, Deuteronomy 8.18, together. But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. How many of you believe this with all your heart? God has given you the ability to produce wealth. You believe in that? Yes. Tell somebody beside you, you've got, the you've got the ability. And then tell him in a louder voice, use it. Use it. Amen? Amen? So this, this theology of money that I just presented to you can be very shocking to somebody who has never heard it before. But I'm telling you now, I want to see more good people blessed. I want to see more good people prosper. I want to see more good people so blessed in their jobs, in their investments, in their businesses. Why? Because when we have more good people who are financially blessed, then what's going to happen? God can use that money for His purposes. I am just so tired of listening to bad people getting rich through illegal means. Yes or no? You know, we're, we're sick and tired of that. And then the good people are here and they're not being blessed because they think it's wrong to be blessed. And, and I'm challenging all of you now, just opening your heart to God and say, is this a way to love God more? Is this a way to love other people more? And my prayer is that you'll be able to do it. There's this guy. His name is Scott Neeson, and he, he, was a, he was the former CEO of Fox International. And one day he decided to sell his mansion. He decided to sell his Porsche. He, he goes to Cambodia, and there he feeds and sends to school 1,000 children. I just saw this story two days ago. And I said, might as well show it to you because there are many, many more like him. I mean, I could just go on and on and tell you one story after another of people who are so blessed, but then have made that decision. I don't want to live my life the way I'm living now. And, and, and they do something with their wealth. And this guy, 1,000 kids will have a new future because he allowed the overflow of his wealth to them. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you this challenge. Would you want to do that in your life? Do you want to be so blessed that your blessings will overflow? Amen? This has been my experience. And I, I, love, I love sharing this to people that you know, I'll, I'll share this, this story that you probably heard already, but I don't care. I'm holding the microphone. <laughs> that, that pivotal moment in my life that, that changed me was when I was preaching as a single man in these prayer meetings, and there was this woman who came up to me with her daughter. Hold, she was holding the hand of her daughter, and she said, Brother Bo, pray over me. And I said, what, what do you want me to pray for you? And, and have you noticed that? I, I notice that when people come up to me for prayer, 50% of the time, it's all about, it's all about money, you know? And, and this woman said, Brother Bo, my, my child needs to be enrolled and, and the last day is tomorrow and I, I have no money for the tuition fee and I, I hope, I, I, I pray that God will give me money. And I say, sure. And, you know, when, when, when I said, when, when I heard that she, she did not have money for the tuition fee, I, out of curiosity, I asked her, how much do you need? 
And, and she said, Brother Bo, I'm so ashamed to tell this to you, but I, I only need 700 pesos. I said, why is that so small? This happened many years ago, okay? And, and she said, I, just, I can only pay the monthly installment, but, but, but even that monthly installment, I can't pay. You know, and, and, and I said, wow, 700 bucks. When, when I heard 700 bucks, you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to pull out my wallet and say, 700 bucks? Ito, pa pray over, pray over pa tayo? I wanted to give her 700 bucks. I could not. Ask me why. I had 20 pesos in my wallet. That was all I had. And it crushed my heart. And I said, let me pray for you. That was all I could do. And then after praying for her, she was teary-eyed. She said, thank you so much, Brother Bo. I feel so much better. And then she hugged me. She got the hand of, of, of her daughter. And then she walked out of the room. And the way she walked out of the room, my gosh, she walked out so slowly. You know why? Why, why was she walking out slowly? Because she told someone she needed money and she thought that that guy will help. How could I? I wanted to help. Do I give her my 20 pesos? Ito, sister, 20 pesos, 680. <laughs> when she finally left the room for the very first time in my life, very first time, I prayed, Lord, for the sake of that woman and her child and the people like them, I'm giving you permission to make me rich. And, 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 and uh, I was so afraid to say that prayer. I thought a lightning will strike me. Um, no lightning came. And I started, I started studying about money. I started getting into business, and one business after another failed. So that's normal. But then some of them succeeded. And then what, what I did was a, a portion of the profits of the business, I invested into the stock market. I was blessed by God to be given a mentor in the stock market, Edward Lee, one of our speakers here. And, and through all these years, God has prospered me. And now I'm able to help so many people through the overflow of blessings. And I just, I just want to challenge you right now. There was this one guy who came up to me one time. Brother Bo, I have, I have something to show you. Oh, what is that? And it was a flat box, like really thin, flat box. He opened it. There was this huge gold medal, like really huge, like plate size. I said, wow, is that yours? And he said, yes, Brother Bo. Wow, uh, whatever that is, congratulations. <laughs> and he said, Brother Bo, you don't recognize me, do you? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> and he said, I'm one of your scholars. Oh, I just came here to thank you that because of you, I've, I graduated uh, magna cum laude and, and from someone who could not bring out 700 pesos to help one girl, I'm now able to help many, many people because I allowed God to bless me. And with the overflow of blessings, everybody say that again, overflow. Amen. I'm going to ask somebody to share, a uh, good friend of ours, very generous person now, so blessed. And, you know, I met him and he, he, he has this, he, he's going to inspire you. Please welcome Casey Makapagal. <laughs> Grabe. Good morning. So I'm here to share my journey. Um, Bagnetified was built um, before I got sick. So I was 10 months in the, I had 10 months of fever. Four months I was in the hospital. And um, I thought I I thought I was going to die. And out of hope, out of desperation, um, 
Bagnetified was created. And that moment, I realized that my life on earth is temporary and I have to give back to people. Um, before, syempre, nung nag-aaral ako, laging sinasabi, prophets, when you do business, you know, right now, even I'm studying masters, um, we are always bombarded that our key performance index should be about profit, about sales. Um, but I realized something that for you to be blessed, you have to bless others first. That's why um, I think my personal testimony here, um, supposedly kasi yung rebranding ng Bagnetified will start 19th. But uh, with God's grace, hindi siya natuloy, natuloy siya today. And we started pa November 19th of the rebranding. And the sales of our company, uh, because we have changed it by bless others first method, which is um, our people are constantly, um, we always tell them that you should bless your customers first, you should be blessed. Um, and our sales increase just for two days by 50%. And uh, wala kaming TV ad, it's just social media, it's organic, we, we didn't have any advertisements. And that's why I believe that um, whenever we do um, blessings, like we, we bless others, we, were, uh, we are actually blessed more. And uh, I don't know if you've watched the video, we have a happy blessing hour from 2 to, 2 to 5 p.m., all magnetified outlets. 50% of our sales goes to charities. So yung charities na sinusupport ng Light of Jesus, Anoem, Moms, Jeremiah, Jesus Christ for Cancer, and um, four others. Um, talagang nakatulong, hindi lang din sa amin, but sa ibang tao. And again, I would like to thank Brother Bo for trusting us to be part of this kerygma. It's such a privilege. Also, pangarap ko lang to dati na maging major sponsor. Two years ago, sabi ko, Lord, gusto ko maging major sponsor kami, yung company namin. But now, I think with God's grace and help, um, talagang sinabi niya sa akin na mas marami ka pang matutulungan dahil sa uh, negosyo mo. So again, thank you so much and I hope that um, you'll join us in our mission. Thank you and God bless you all. Bagnetified. Wow. Sayang. <laughs> I'm semi-veg, but I'm sure it's delicious. How many branches, Casey, do you have? 24 branches of Bagnetified. Woo! Talk to Casey if you want to open another branch, okay? God bless you. God bless you. God prosper you. I'm going to pray for you. Can we all stand? How many of you have some business ideas in your mind that you want to put up some, a, a business? Okay. How many of you want to, to have a virtual career? That's what Jomar Hilario calls it. And it's uh, you, instead of working in a job, eight to five, in a, in a, in a specific office, you, you can work at home and then you can earn dollars. You know, how many of you have that dream? All right. Wonderful. And how many of you want to stay in your job and be promoted in your job? Raise your hand. I want to see them also. You know, to each his own, right? Different strokes for different folks. Whatever dream God has planted in your heart. We're going to pray. We're going to ask God to bless you abundantly. How many of you have already investments? Raise your hand. You already have investments. You want God to prosper that. Let's pray together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Can I invite you to lift up your hands as a symbol that you want the overflow of blessings? Father in heaven, right now, this moment, I pray for every person here whose hands are lifted up, that you, the giver of all blessings, the source of all abundance, I ask you to open the floodgates of heaven and pour upon them, Lord, an avalanche 
of grace, of wisdom, of strength, of perseverance and endurance and commitment and hard work and guidance and leadership. I also pray for prosperity, not just for themselves. I pray for more love, that love will stretch their hearts, that there will be an overflow of your blessings to the people around them, their families, their friends, the poor that, are, that, will, that you will plant in their path. My dear friends, everybody say this with me. Say, Jesus, Father, I ask you, come, use me to be a channel of blessing to the people you want me to bless. While you're closing your eyes, I want you to imagine the people that you want to bless. You know, brothers and sisters, the reason why my, I did not stop in my business ventures, even if one after another it failed, I failed in 12 businesses, but I did not stop, I did not quit. Why? Because foremost in my mind are the people that I wanted to help, the ministries that I wanted to flourish. And I told myself, these, these people need the blessings. These, the, these ministries need, need, need the funds. These missionaries need the support. And, and because of that, I did not stop. I want you to think of the people and the ministries that you want to bless. And I know you too won't stop. You're going to let God bless you. One more time, everybody say, Father, bless me more so I can bless more. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give God a big, big hand, everybody. Amen. Amen. I want you to just encourage somebody, maybe hug that person or shake that hand of that person and just say, your blessings will overflow. 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 Will overflow. Amen. Are you excited? Hey, you're going to have failures along the way. Not, not if, when, you know, they're going to come, but they're going to be lessons. The reason why I'm successful in my businesses now, because I failed and learned from those lessons. Do, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? But when the failures come, please promise me, you won't stop. You won't stop, right? No matter what, you won't stop. And you'll keep, you'll keep learning, you'll go through the falls, you won't stop until God will overflow your blessings. You've got great speakers ahead of you, and uh, it's going to be an amazing day.